Hello there, ladies and gentlemen of the humble internet. My name is Ryan, aka the Ryan Man. And welcome what is the final home stretch for the current longest running series on this channel Ryan Man's Bizarre Adventures in Kato Shoujo. I hope someone out there bought a seatbelt for your computer chair to buckle yourself in because we are about to at least i think if it turns out that we're not then uh, i'm just gonna have just the, a huge amount of egg on my face but i think we are about to enter what is most likely not just a love making scene but the final love making scene so to any one of my particular friends out there who has trouble sitting through me going through a sex scene. That's me cracking my knuckles. Buckle up, because I gotta bust out my suave, seductive voice. <laughs> kiss her immediately so quickly that I don't even have time to <laughs> I can't keep a straight face my headphones fell off my head I can't honestly keep a straight face every time I try doing this I'm sorry to any woman in the future who has the misfortune of having to have sex with me I, I am sorry in advance so quickly I don't even have time to enjoy it even though she was prepared for it Shizune blushes a deep red I feel a similar heat rising in my loins, neck, and cheeks. Okay, it's gonna be happening. This is this, this the, the mood is right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm. I move in for another kiss, but as I do so, she moves backwards at the same time and impishly jumps onto the cabinet behind her, alone, in total silence of the room. We just look at each other for a while. This time, I kiss her more deeply. Her lips are light and dry. All oh, you people at home, don't lick your lips now, you dry-ass lips-having bitch! And open a tiny bit. I'm only able to appreciate the sensation for a moment before Shizune starts kissing me back forcefully. Her bangs brush against my closed eyelids and I let myself sink deeper into the kiss. I can feel the shape of her body through her clothes, which only makes me hold Shizune tighter. It takes some effort for the both of us to draw back from each other. We're both blushing, both from the kiss and thoughts of what's to come. And I'm far from the only one breathing a little heavier. Hey, wait a minute, I have a quick question, Shizune, and I would honestly bring this up with her in the middle of the act. So Rin's not allowed to sleep on the furniture, but we're allowed to fuck on it? The stare I'm giving Shizune right now, not the stare that, the, like, that my boy Hisao was giving. What the fuck is up with that thing on your hair, dude? Son, cut that the shit off. What are you growing rabbit ears like, like her brother? Only I have this weird talent. What the hell is that smell? Only I have this weird talent of just probably annihilating any sense of romance in what was supposed to be a romantic moment. It's a talent. I know. 
apologies in advance for whatever woman decides to marry me. I really hope the only way that's going to be okay is if this woman that uh, is just as deranged as I somehow am while also being hot looking. That's a dangerous combo. We're both blushing. Both. Blah, 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 blah. I read that already. As Shizune begins to take off my tie, I start undoing her blouse. It takes a while to figure it out. I never really thought about how our school's blouses work before. I mean, fair? Shizune's blouse is a little tight on her, and her arms get stuck for a moment because of it. I find myself peeling it off of her, although with the way she's trying to wriggle out at the same time, it isn't easy. The side is a little comical. Okay. Okay. We're in DEFCON 1. I don't remember how the DEFCONs work, but we're in one. The red light that I've installed in my home is now flashing red. Everyone is now being made aware that we're, it, it, we are about to enter scenes that will force me to edit. But we do it. We do it hard. One last time, meatbags. We're going into that breach. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Both alarm. That's <laughs> me. It's like bursting through the window. It was like to the band outside. False alarm! Cancel the trumpets! <laughs> Once Shizune's arms are free, she slides out of her shirt, her skirt falling around her knees with it after she unhitches it and works it off of her legs. The only thing covering her now is her bra and panties. And her stockings here, bro. Uh, are we counting that in with the panties? I, I, I'll admit I'm not that versed in the women clothing thing. But unless that's part of her body, which it might be. Her figure is curvaceous and taut. And the heavily color... And the healthy color of her skin contrasts with the, with the black of her underwear. It's a wonderful sight. Especially against the background of the moonlight through the window. She looks at my chest and works the buttons of my shirt one by one. The, the process is greatly slowed by my hands moving up and down her thighs. It's a little amusing to play with her like this. Eventually, finally, my shirt falls to the ground. Shizune surprises me by quickly pulling me in for a deep kiss without warning, but I quickly return the gesture. Why are you bolder today than on the roof? Cause my boy's probably shy, girl. Then again, you know, if there, if there was risk of someone walking in on us on the roof, there's still a great if not greater chance of someone walking in on us uh, in the classroom. Did we lock the door? Oh my god, did we lock the door? Or in your room. Did you want Kenji to watch? Oh. Oh my god, do you want an audience? Oh my god, she wa She wants sex to be a competition. She wants an audience. Shizune is the mindset of if there is casual sex, that means there is ranked competitive sex. I try to think of a good answer, but it isn't easy. How would I be able to respond to that even if I could? There's no way to, unless I were to say that bureaucracy really puts me in the mood. I would totally use that goddamn line to think bureaucracy makes me Fucking moist.
Oh my god. Like 6,000 Ryman Empire fun bucks to the first person to successfully use that line? Bureaucracy makes me moist. <laughs> My shirt having been disposed of, Shizune moves onto my belt, and I decide to help her undo it instead of answering her question. I don't think it would be much good at this point. Okay, 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 this, okay, I'm sensing a reveal. I'm sensing, I am sensing a, re a reveal. My porn senses are maxed out tingling right now. The red light has come back on! It's not hard to get off. It... I had a joke, but never mind. It falls to the ground with a metallic clunk. I move in for another kiss and begin to slide my hand up her side. But suddenly, she lurches forward, making me stumble backwards. The stiff edge of the table behind me was the furthest thing from my mind, until I feel it stabbing into my lower back. I didn't notice it was there. It makes me crash in a little tighter as we fall back under the surface of the table. <laughs> Sad. I think that's the last time I'll ever be able to make that joke. We've did it. We've come full circle. I know. I know. I'm. I know what part I obviously am going to have to be censoring. But I'm wondering if I'm going to have to censor her ass. She's got panties, but this is quite a sight. I know YouTube, like, doesn't give a fuck about me, and, I, like, I fly so far under the radar, I could probably say whatever. But I'm wondering if this is probably cutting- I'm probably just gonna have to throw something here. I don't know if just one big giant image or one for each cheek, but if I do one for each cheek, they're gonna wonder what the hell is in the middle. <sighs> Maybe I'll be extra lazy after all the other editing and just throw one giant, like, picture of mayonnaise or something I don't fucking know I hold back a sigh as Shizune victoriously holds herself above me she won again I'm distracted until Shizune's bra falls on me seemingly like it dropped out of the sky I end up laughing despite how hard I try not to and it's contagious enough that Shizune starts to as well Freed from her bra. Her boobs are larger than I thought. L yeah, yeah, you can't see it because I'm censoring it, obviously. Where the fuck were those hiding? Where are the actual goddamn... Is her bra like a portal to a fucking void? Where did they come from? Where did they go? Where do you think I'm sticking Cotton Eye Job?
<clears throat> Even though they were noticeably large through her shirt already, she picks up her bra with her fingers and flicks it off as my hands move over her body. Straddling me with her knees on the table, Shizune slips her underwear off, with my hands moving from her hips unconsciously to help her. I catch a glimpse of my watch. It's only been a few minutes, but it felt like so much longer. But she eases herself downwards, closer and closer and closer, and until our bare chests are touching, her breasts feeling strange against the scar over my heart. This is a lovely pan shot that no one's going to have to see. The whole screen is going to have to be censored. They're going big! More ways than one on this final sex scene for me. When Shizune sits up, I feel myself slipping inside, slowly enveloped by her below as her breasts lift away from my torso. An attack from two fronts. I think dryly consider the situation. How like her. It's where you should use the word dryly, because right now, this situation is anything but. <laughs> I should just stop now and leave you stewing in your lust. I have never thrown a naked woman through a pane of glass to hurtle to their death. But I'm starting to consider it. She says as she starts grinding herself against me, causing me to blink the sudden pleasure. Very funny, Shizune. I soon lose track of my thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> She's either sprung a leak, or she's secretly been a snake woman. And now that I put that in the universe, I suddenly really want to play XCOM again. Shizune bites her lip to muffle her voice from coming out. An unwanted voice. This is the most I've ever heard of it. No, you've heard her go <laughs> the last time she lowered herself onto your penis, and she blushes when she realizes she let the slip out. To cover it up, Susanne drives herself against me harder, causing me to jolt against her, driving my erection deeper into her. I thrust my hips toward- Oh my god, we've become the drill piercing the heavens! At the sudden sensation of movement, and Shizune fights against me, trying to pin me back down when I manage to pull my arms out from under me. This is competitive sex! In that moment, her hips thrust back with even greater force in response. The sound of Shizune's soft restrained moans, and the sight of her bountiful boobs moving up and down and up and down. When each time her hips buckle, I'm starting to hurt my hand. Her against mine grow more arousing with the time and the stillness of the student council room. <laughs> It's the strangest feeling I'm being watched by someone right now. I don't know. Are the ghosts watching me? Or is it Monica? Or is it both? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Since I, I'm i willing to give this one free for people, anyone who's making a hentai whatever of whatever, here are your free noises to use. Royalty free.
You're free. Use that on loop. Use it however you want. Send me a link. <laughs> I almost can't take it anymore. The pleasurable sensation swelling up between my legs. Multiply by the pressure of Suzune's weight on top of me, making it hard for me to think. My hips start bucking by themselves! Shizune's hands push mine down onto the table. Every motion of hers is a push of some kind. The table under, a, under us rattles under our combined weight. I doubt it would collapse, but they never really constructed this to withstand fucking. But the noise is really something. Well, not that Shizune notices. Her pace only grows faster, until it feels as though she might shove me across the table with how forceful she's being. Without warning, her moons come to a final crescendo! Ah! Suddenly she stops, almost falling onto me with enough speed that if she didn't catch herself, it would probably have knocked us both unconscious! The worst situation possible. I... I would have paid money for that sight. You you just walk in and both your fucking co-workers at my, at my at, at, you both your fucking co-workers passed out naked on top of each other. Like, huh? If someone happened to walk in while we were knocked out, did we lock the door? I'm surprised, but not enough to forget that we're both naked and the sudden painful interruption that just happened. Why did this have to happen? Was it intentional? To leave me stewing in my own lust? Shizune lets uh, out her breath sheepishly, realizing it at the same time as I do. Sorry, I, I, I tripped, or slipped, or something like that. Probably slipped is a more accurate word. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, while you're up, can you go check if the door is locked? I had a thought. As I sit here, like, just... Again, realizing that the universe had, in fact, combined. Scary thought. Scary, scary thought. I just now realize this entire episode is just going to be whatever picture I find. We gotta go into maximum overdrive and finish, boys and girls. Otherwise, there's gonna be like eight parts in a row of just six. She quickly gets off the table and bolts over to check and locks it. Unlocks it and locks it again, pulling on the knob just to make sure. When she's finally sure, she makes an out of place motion with her hands. Safe. What a coincidence, because that's the safest thing around here. I am unprotected. I'm glad you can take, take things so lightly. I didn't do it on purpose. Why don't you take the lead, then? This table's about to break. Come on. I grab Shizune by the shoulders and try to put her on the table instead. Her brow scrunches in displeasure as the edge of the table pokes her in the back, just as it did to me. She opts to help herself up onto it. This is also the first time I've seen Shizune lying down unclothed. The contours of her collarbone and breasts are beautiful. And makes my eyes follow them down to her shapely hips. A delicate hourglass figure. Let's break it. <laughs> I run my hands along the curve of her body from her shoulders on down. I slowly insert myself into Shizune up to the hilt. Damn, bro. <laughs> An intense warmth and tightness immediately surround me. And I start pissing into her to, to, to pick up where we left off before. 
Her body feels so hot against my skin. Each time our hips meet with each thrust, and where we're holding each other, I feel like I've been scalded by her body heat. On top of that, I feel more sensitive now than before. I find myself pushing into Shizune harder to make up for it. My hands glide around the curve of her thigh, and I carefully tease her with my hand as well, almost losing my balance when she reacts strongly, snapping upwards and back into my groin and nearly pushing us both onto the floor. Moving my hands up, I grab her prominent breasts and fondle them as I've always wanted to. They feel even larger than they appear and overflow my hands, soft and perfectly shaped. She squirms under me as I flick my fingers over her nipples and twist her arms around mine instead, gripping my fingers and drawing me closer. It feels like I'm wrestling her. The lock is inescapable. From the first time our hands met, I guess we were connected. Whether it's through her pulling me from one student council event to another or holding hands as lovers, I think it's been the same. The confidence that comes across in the way she grasps my hand. Her hands writhe across the surface of the table, and grabbing onto it, she hooks her legs around my back. Whoa, oh, oh, okay, we're, we're definitely becoming father now. Pressing us closer together, connecting us even more closely, and then trapping me inside of her. Her inner walls are so hot and tight, and with her pushing up against me, the friction only increases, sending me over the top. Ah! All too soon, the feeling ends. Look at. Okay, I can't have you look. Okay, okay, maybe I can, like, scale back and crop whatever picture I've thrown onto the entire of the screen just enough for you to see. Look at that smug face! Oh, she knows she just got knocked up. Oh, she knows. Oh, oh, she locked us in. I can't, I'm not cropping anything over, over yonder. She locked us in. Oh yeah, Daddy's not just a nickname. <laughs> We've been promoted to having it as a title. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna leave this crop for the rest of uh, for for the rest of eternity. I don't know. All I can do afterwards is stay inside of her with my hands holding the table, both for lack of energy and because her legs are still locking me in. For Shizune's part, she smiles almost dreamily. The sight makes me smile as well. Her legs slowly fall, allowing me to extract myself. Exhausted, I lean back against the desk and try to regain my breath before putting my before putting my clothes back on. I notice a dull, hot throbbing in my chest as I button my shirt back up. Puts a bad aftertaste on everything that just happened. Okay, Shizune popping in for the reminder of why I can't stop not having a picture up here. It was a lucky break that Misha couldn't be here. Oh, this is... Oh, you know what? Fuck it, we'll keep going. Wasn't it? You're in an unusually choking mood today. I wonder what she had to do. Shazana traces the air lazily with a finger and points to the door. Go see for yourself. I wonder how how much I could get away with after making love to a woman. Immediately talking to another topic, bringing the topic to, hey, I wonder what your best friend is doing right now. Why don't you just tell me? It's more interesting if you see for yourself. Seeing is believing. Sure. Clever. Maybe I will. What about you? 
Are you going to stay here all day? It's getting late. It feels like my last day as student council president, so maybe I'll sleep here tonight. It could be the last chance I have to sleep at my desk, like after a long day trying to meet a deadline. So you yell at Rin. But I'm pretty sure there are some stains on this desk that are not coming out. That's weird. I'll sleep in my bed. Sleeping sitting is a skill. A very useful one. Right. Well, <clears throat> for a moment after I leave the room, I actually do consider seeing what Misha is up to. Just because Shizune made it sound so secretive. As if it were we were building a time machine or something. But in the end, I decided not to. That night, the air is pleasant at this time of year. It's refreshing and a little humid, but not so chilly as to make it uncomfortable to, to stay outside for a while. It's late enough for the courtyard to, to be all but deserted, too. Did I remember to put my pants back on? After Shizune and I said our farewells to each other, I set out to return to my dormitory room. I didn't uh, even make it all the way there, though, before getting distracted. Doesn't seem like a bad idea to go see what Misha is up to. I have nothing better to do. No homework. I'm out of ever anything worth reading. And on top of that, I simply want to know. I have a question for the writer. Why, if we're just going back in afterwards, after we just said we're not, why is this scene here? Why? 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 I don't write visual novels. Maybe one day. Is there like a, a certain limit? Like where you're told that it, it has to be a certain length? That would make more sense. This isn't my first time in the in the uh, being in the main building after hours. But usually, this is I'm leaving the place with Shizune and Misha after a long day at the student council. Not entering it alone. The atmosphere is quiet. A word I would not normally use to describe these halls. It's a little creepy. A light starts flickering up ahead. This seems like a horror movie. Mo uh, this seems like a horror movie moment waiting to happen. Feeling a hand on my shoulder, I stiffen reflectively. Reflexively, reflectively. It's not Misha, or else there would have been hands clamped over my eyes and a sing-song "Guess Who" accompanying them. So who is it? Oh fuck! I hope it's not Kenji, or at least it's someone I know. Or this would take a turn for the weird. Whoever just quickly slips in front of me. It's Shizune. What are you doing here? I'm so relieved that I forget to sign it. Shizune puts a finger up to her lips. I guess even though she can't hear, she has some idea of what loudness is. And can tell from my expression that I was being loud. And apparently, being loud isn't a good thing right now. But then... Why is Misha her interpreter? Oh, very funny. Why are you here? I was waiting for you to come see. I knew you would show up. It, it took you a while, though. You've been waiting here? Yes, but that isn't important. We have to be stealthy if we don't want Misha to detect us. Tell me if I'm not being stealthy enough, okay? With that, she suddenly starts slowly tiptoeing through the middle of the hall. I pat her on the shoulder to get her attention. That's not stealthy. Why do we have to be stealthy? She refuses to answer. Probably because signing it and walking stealthily at the same time doesn't look easy. Before I know it, we're in front of our homeroom. Suddenly, a sound like a crack of a whip pierces the air, followed by a familiar expression of frustration. I'm sure a sound like that isn't good for my heart. Not to mention everything sounds about a million times louder with how silent it is. It's coming from inside the room. And I sidle up to Shizune to get a look inside. Muto? Can you stop throwing your pencil, please? How do you even throw a pencil that loudly? 
he looks very flustered. What an understatement. I sympathize with Muto. I was able to hear Misha's pen break the sound barrier even through through a wall and a thick classroom door. It probably blew out his eardrums and left an imprint on the wall. Why are you here? I'm not throwing it. When I get nervous, I like to spin it around, but then I forget I'm holding on to it and... It doesn't matter either way. There shouldn't be pencils flying around. I get enough of that during regular school hours. I don't need it after hours. Right. Sorry. Whatever. Just stop throwing. Or releasing. Or dropping things, please. Teachers have work too. What the fuck is going on here? I know Shizune is watching the same scene I am. Muto is yelling at the top of his lungs, and Misha is being Misha. I can hear them reasonably well through the wall, but Shizune obviously can't hear anything at all, so I wonder what watching this is like for her. She must know, since she understands well enough to want me to see it too, but I have to wonder if she ever feels like she's missing out on something. You know, having to work that much harder to understand what she's observing. It looks like she's taking supplementary lessons, is she? Yeah. I answer, despite knowing the, the question is completely rhetorical. Misha told me she really wants to be a sign language teacher in the future. If she can get a recommendation, she can study overseas for it. That is why she is working so hard. Her grades were always kind of on the low side. Now I feel guilty. I haven't even thought about what I'm going to do yet. <laughs> Neither have I. The cheerful way she signs is very unlike her. And it's very obviously false. Let's get out of here. and We don't want to be seen. It would be a problem if we were caught uh, standing out here like idiots. Where? The student council room? Uh-oh. Shaking her head, she slips into the classroom across the hall instead. Great hiding place. You're unusually sarcastic lately. With the door closed, it's a good one. Anyway, wasn't it interesting? Yes, but I'm not really surprised. I close the door behind us, prompting Suzumi to laugh sound soundlessly as she slides into a chair. For a second, she depress it depresses me. I want to hear her real laugh. I was. I've been looking down on Misha. I didn't think she had a goal at all. But it turns out that I was wrong. I made a careless assumption. I thought Misha was, an, was as aimless as I was. I was stupid. I lost. She suddenly pauses to crack her knuckles, then folds her hands over each other, and leans forward in her chair. In the abnormal quiet of the building, I can hear Mateau yelling at Misha again, even across a hallway through two doors. Shizune's eyes are locked on mine, unblinking behind the gleaming lenses of her glasses, observing my reaction to her words. This is a test. Her opinion of people is rarely formed from how they respond to questions. It's how they respond to the statements that count. In hindsight, it makes sense. Shizune's inability to speak as well as uh, just her personality in general, means that anything she says is a big commitment on her part. Everything. For that reason, I sometimes doubt that she says anything without a hidden agenda behind it. This sounds remarkably, remarkably paranoid. Even Kenji would think so. Unfortunately, I'm so caught up in thinking about it that I forget to give her an answer. She takes it as there not being one. There was an invisible time limit to this test, shorter than usual. Just as I thought. What do you mean? You don't agree? Not really. It's, it's not that. I, I don't get it. I want to force my will on people. This is one of those moments where it's like... 
when you're having a conversation with people and after a certain time passes, the real talk comes out. Like with me, it's like 11.59 p.m., right? And it's like, you know, mac and cheese is my fucking, one of my fucking favorite meals to eat. Then as soon as it hits midnight, I think, I've killed three people. <laughs> How refreshingly honest. Don't give me a weird look like that. It's not like that was always my intention. At first, I was just bored. I wanted to see someone's passion for something. Then I could try and beat them. I wanted to test their ability or their or convictions. But it was impossible. No one has any passion for anything in this school. They just want to keep to themselves. I can't believe it. It's too boring that way. I thought there was no way these drab people could be for real. It goes beyond not wanting to make waves. They had to have some interests. They had to be hiding something. I wanted to expose it, and reveal it, and drag it out. One of the most successful ways to get people to open up to you, and cheer them up, is to open up with a story about yourself, and then you ease them into telling them about themselves. It's like give and take, but with an element of manipulation, which makes it interesting. I can't do that. If I attempt to have Misha talk about me, for me, it makes me seem arrogant. The message has to go through a messenger. I'm standing next to Misha, telling her to tell someone about me. You don't have to be able to read sign language to see that. If I were forced to sit through that, I would think I was arrogant too. I was frustrated. I couldn't figure out a way to have a conversation with anyone but Misha. No one would open up to me. I came to the conclusion that I can't make people confide in me, or believe in me. I can only hope to create things, and show them to people, and hope that they make them, and hope they make them happy. Or I could make them more forceful, and hope it would be eventually stick to someone. I guess that would be me, if it was vaguely depressing. Somewhere along the line, I think I started to ignore Misha. Or see her as less of a person, or something like that. I took her for granted. I think I would... I think that would be the best way to put it. It was like she was just an extension of myself. I forgot the, that the whole time Misha was there, opening up to me, and giving me 100% every day. I missed what I was looking for, because it was in plain sight. How stupid of me. I really did become arrogant. That's why I've lost. I'm more short-sighted than I was back then. I went in reverse. She's pacing back and forth now, almost brooding, yet still fi filled with so much energy that she can't stand to stop moving. If you give her a, a hold of two wires, I'm sure she's doing it with power a light bulb. It's odd that I could have such a light-hearted thought while she's being so serious. And in spite of that, Misha tells me that I'm her inspiration. Isn't that ridiculous? I'm not the kind of person who can inspire others. Even if a person who inspires you is flawed, it could be acceptable. I thought about this. There is even acceptable hypocrisy. For instance, if your hero was an athlete, but unsportsmanlike, they could still be respected for their athletic ability, even if they had shortcomings as a person. However, she snaps her fingers briskly. It sounds like a thunderclap in the empty room, and Shizune takes a few seconds to stretch her fingers. Come to think of it, this is the most she's ever signed. If someone like me has no goals, it would be totally unacceptable. It would be the worst kind of hypocrisy. And hypocrites don't deserve responsibility over anything. They can't even manage themselves. How incredibly pessimistic. Makes me angry to think about it. I would hate myself just a few months ago. This must be how I look to others. And funny enough, it was Shizune and Mishu who convinced me to stop. Without them, I'm sure things would be much different. And not for the better. Actually, it would have gone one of four other routes, but those were previous seasons. Lately, I feel as though we pass around our miseries as much as we're supported by each other. But I think it just comes with the territory of having friends and being close to someone. You're the leader anyway. 
That is only because no one else wants to be. But that means you still are, since people are putting their trust in you anyway. In fact, doesn't that make it more important? Either way, you are the leader. You are the inspirational figure, or whatever you want to call it. You're, you're responsible for what you tame. I read that in a book somewhere. That's clever. She suddenly only seems to show what she's feeling on her face when she wants to, but I don't think she's being sarcastic. I don't want to tame anyone, though. Being the later and being looked up to, then. Same thing. I never wanted to be the leader. It just ends up that way. I don't believe that. All you do is try to grab more and more responsibility. Wait, wait. I wasn't going to tell you that I don't enjoy it. I don't care about being the leader, but I don't mind. I don't care about being the best, but I don't mind. You're right, though, about me wanting responsibility. Of course, I want more responsibilities. Having responsibility makes me feel alive. That's why I joined Student Council. If there is no pressure, I just can't stand it. Even so, now that I'm leader, I've always thought of being the leader meant give you, you know, to meant you give orders, but it really is more. It's about having a goal. If I don't have a goal, then it's pointless. People would only be following me for my own enjoyment. It would be selfish. <laughs> it's a strangely uh, moral viewpoint for a person who seems to love one-upping others so much. Resting her chin on her tented fingers, Suzuki uh, looks disarmingly childish as she thinks hard about her problem. The expression on her face is a little comical, because it's too obvious, and therefore very unlike her. It comes with the job. I think you have to be a leader. You wouldn't be satisfied with anything else. You would just get bored. Shizune doesn't reply, but from her annoyed expression, I think I've guessed correctly. I've been thinking I need a little direction too. Were you told that it's important to contribute to society? What an unusual response, so out of nowhere that I don't know how to respond. It also bothers me, though I don't know why. Possibly because it doesn't seem like something that would come from her. So I start to think that it isn't Shizune's thought at all. I wonder who told her that. Well, it was probably her dad, but there's a chance that she came up with it on her own. If so, would it be because she can't hear? Why do you say that? Just because. I don't believe it. I guess that's right, though. I see. I don't know if it's the same for me. I hate it. I think everyone wants a purpose. Looking back, it makes sense that Shizune doesn't have one. Hmm. All that energy would otherwise have been directed at something. Shunsi had nothing to channel it towards. She suddenly lashed out in all directions. Reminds me of a down power line flailing in a storm. Furious and incandescent, but aimless and dangerous, just like Shizune. I want to say that this is why she feels the need to turn everything into a competition, but that's probably just how she is. Having a goal to put that energy towards is just the next level. How about this? I go into business. My family is well connected, so it shouldn't be too hard. That comes off sounding a little unethical and neop uh, neopatistic, doesn't it? A little. I won't coast, though. I'll work hard until I'm at the very very apex. When I have so much money as possible, so much that it would be like I won't know what to do with it, I'll move on to the next step. After sitting on it for a while, of course. Like a fairy tale dragon. You want to be... A philanthropist. Why do I feel like I, this this saga is segueing me into Metal Gear? I feel like I'm being segued into Metal Gear. I don't know why. Tisk tisk. What were you thinking? That I want to be a miser? Well, it's true. It's part of the plan. Don't sell me short and stop there, though. Susanna still looks uneasy. 
Of course, even if she did seem to resolve her problem quickly, no one can get over their anxieties that fast. No one can solve their problems that easily. The important thing is, it looks as though that she has her heart set on trying. It's still hard to tell whether the drive of her comes from a good or bad place. But she has something to hold on to now. I can generally believe that she does. I'm happy for her. At the same time, I feel a little cold. Like I'm the one who's behind now. I'm the only one without a goal. <sighs> there haven't been any further disruptions since that week. I think I should end it there. <laughs> this. This was a fun episode to do. Oh, but I gotta quit. I've gotta do some editing. Because I have a feeling I'm about to hit the end. It's gonna be... Fucking finale time. I, 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 I can't think of a way it could possibly end on a bang. So again, when, the, when this season ends... I'll think of one last little special do. Maybe I'll do a, a, a montage. I don't know. Just a final farewell. But I'm thinking. I'm thinking if this is going to be the end. Yeah, if, if that's def if if we're definitely moving into the end. Maybe next episode will be the last episode, even if it's a two-hour special. Hell, maybe even, even if it's a three-hour special. I'll play it by ear. We'll play it by ear. But until that next episode, which will probably be later today that I'm uploading it, it's probably up right now by the time that you're viewing this. Or listening to this, let's be frank. Stay awesome out there, folks. I'm off to edit. <laughs>